Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Simon. <laughs> I don't know what you that was, wanted. No, that was beautiful. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Simon at Savagerys, and today I'm joined by Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings. Hi. And Mercedes is going to do, I've not done this video series for ages, it's have a nosy through my bookshelves where somebody that I love dearly, or Mercedes, <laughs> comes and takes five books off the sh bookshelves of books that I've flipped like I've messed that up. Five books from the shelves of the books that I've read. Yeah. And we have a chat about them. So Mercedes. Yeah. Book one. Book number one. I've decided to break. Looks so you in. <laughs> I'm hiding them. <laughs> I've decided to break you in gently. So book number one. Oh, we've been talking about her today. Is the Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. When did you read this? I read this way before book two. Oh really? Yeah. So I read this the year it came out. And this is the only Sarah Waters you've read. No. What else have you read? Affinity. Okay. I think that's it. No, The Night Watch. Okay. Did so you... I've not read Tip in the Velvet. Yeah. Uh, I've not read The Pain Guest, which is just over there, but I'm reading The Pain Guest for my yeah. big book weekender. Yeah, or Fingersmith, if you've not read I'm hiding behind your book, Mercedes. Sorry. You're not a pro. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? It's my least favourite Sarah Waters yet. You preferred Affinity to this? Yeah. Because, so I know that I've heard lots of people say there's a slow section in this, and it's the, the only... whole book's slow. It is very slow. It's the only Sarah Waters book that I didn't read in two sittings. Oh. Every other one I read in two sittings. Two sittings? Mm. You're insane, they're massive. Yeah, but I just I just think they're amazing and I just can't put them down. Affinity I read in one sitting. I didn't even move from the sofa, I didn't, didn't even get move. a drink. This is the only one I paused for a few days, but I recently listened to it on audio and it's amazing on audio, I really recommend it. And I was like, this is so much better than I remember it being. And I think the reason it works even better on a second go round is, and I won't spoil anything, it's sort of a spooky story, isn't it? Yeah. And when you reread or re-listen, you there's loads of clues that you don't know about the first time because you don't know what the clues are leading up to okay. and it actually makes you realize how intelligent it is and how much he's had to think right from the start so you're saying i need to go back again i uh, personally i i get why people think that this is a bit of a slow one but actually on a reread all that slow bit made sense because it was well, one of the big criticisms it got was it was her first novel not to have a lesbian storyline yes but i think like, which i think was unfair because just because she's a lesbian yeah, she's I written lesbian books agree. She, doesn't she doesn't have, have to, to write yeah, she lesbians doesn't have all to, the time i agree i completely agree and also arguably it's it's most people think it's fairly obvious that the main female lead in this is gay yeah so you know i don't think just because that isn't the crux of the novel doesn't mean you all need to tell Sarah Wars has to write a lesbian novel. So no. um, I, I think it's amazing and I think you should... I think this is well, a I'm book gonna, that should be read twice. I'm going to read, like I said, The Pain Guest for the big book weekend at yeah. the end of August, so the end of this month, and then I'm going to read... Uh, I think Tipping the Velvet I feel I know because I saw the TV show yeah yeah so I feel like I know it but I might get to that but Fingersmith I think is going to be Christmas because oh, Fingersmith's her best everybody says yeah I really love Fingersmith but with Affinity I always feel it gets a little bit of a hard time because it was her first but it was also my first Sarah Waters and I think sometimes you love the first book you read by an author yeah yeah because it's that book no, I still think it's really good but I just think it's one of her weaker ones I think it's better than that no it's better I'm incorrect there's that one Next, I'm gonna go for this one. <laughs> Does it look really suspicious? Beastings, Beastings by Benjamin Wines. I love that So book. I've heard you, you've read quite a few of his books, right? No, not as many as I think. Oh, but I, okay. But the ones so I've read, here, I love. Like, I feel like you recommend him. Well, I think it's well, maybe really you just weird. Have to me. You know when you read one of an author's book, yeah. one book, and therefore you feel like you've read the whole yeah, thing because you yeah, love yeah, it yeah. so much, and that was not the case with Beastings, because I describe Beastings as it would be the bastard love child of Thomas Hardy, and um, Cormac McCarthy. God, okay. <laughs> so if they had a bastard love child, it's it Beastings like and Benjamin Myers. Because it's about a woman who's, we know from the beginning, has stolen a baby. Mm. And she sort of goes on the run with it. Yeah. And she's being chased by a really dodgy priest. Yeah, yeah. But it's really odd because in some ways it feels historical and in other ways it feels apocalyptic. Yeah. So I've read the first few pages and I adore the writing style. And I, I feel oh, like this take is... take home with you. No, I've got my own one, actually. Oh. <laughs> um, I feel like this Skip is a book I'm going to love. But for whatever reason, it sat on my shelf for two years. Just get on with it. I know. And he just won the... He won Walter the Walter Scott, Scott for... Um, the Gallows. Yeah, the, the Gallows, Gallows Pole, Pole, which I really, really enjoyed. I love that one more. Oh, OK. But I still really like the Gallows Pole. I just feel like this could be a sort of book I'd really love in terms of... I think of... you'd like his non-fiction as well, because it's all about the landscape of oh, Yorkshire and nature. It's called Under the Rock. Oh, that's so amazing. I feel like he could be... <laughs> Is it new? Yeah, very new. I don't watch book calls. Oh, that'll be why then. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was 
It's us, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel like he could be a favourite author, but I just haven't given him a chance yet. I bought... He also writes crime, but really, really clever crime. Yes. I've not read those yet, either. Yeah, I've heard about those. I love that. He writes really clever crime that I've not read yet. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, she's off again. <laughs> I now. This is the natural way of things, my Charlotte. Which Woods. we have discussed privately. Yeah. Now not so privately. Now not so privately. I love this book. I you hate, it. hate that book. Literally hate it. I think it's it's by really Charlotte awful. Wood. I think it should have done it much better in the UK I, than it did. I don't think it should have won. It won loads of awards in Australia. I don't think it should have won any awards anywhere. <laughs> it's difficult to talk about because Can I don't. Can you imagine now if we just completely <laughs> silent us it? <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to talk anymore, Mercedes. Uh, effectively. It's about women who... Yeah. I just suddenly felt... Because you say effectively a lot in your videos. I yeah, literally I do, felt yeah. I was in one of your videos. Yeah. And that was a really weird moment. It's like um, meta booktube videos. It's about women who wake up... Well, it's about two women who wake up. They don't know where they are. Mm. They've clearly been drugged. Yeah. And um, then they have their head shaved and everything. And then you realise they're in a compound in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. The question is why. Yeah. Um, There's loads of other women that they meet. Yeah. yeah. Who all, they all have one similar thing, but they can't work out what it is at first. Um, they've got one link. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Jay, I found it incredibly offensive. Really? Yeah, yeah. Now, I heard a lot of people Do say... Do you like a little life or not? No, I thought it was awful. Oh, God, here we go. Yeah. Um, Why are we friends? <laughs> We disagree about a lot of books, like quite strongly, don't we? But then, we? if we love a book like Just yeah. Kid, yeah. we really love yeah, a book. Yeah, completely. So, the reason I had an issue with this one, and I, I don't want to spoil anything, but I had a lot of people talk on various um, interviews I watched with her and whatever. People were saying, oh, this really represents feminism and women and power really well. And I completely disagree. Actually, I think it, it put women in a light that I, I don't think uh, a gang of women together in this situation would act like this. And it angered me that that's how she decided to represent us because I don't think that's how it would go down. There's something I will say about the end of it that I'll talk to you about off mm. camera yeah. that did, I think, let it down a tiny bit. Okay. But I think this was just a really... Ang what I loved about it was it felt like just a, just a rage yeah. of an author just being so angry with the system and with the misogyny yeah. and with all those things. It was just this... But rage. it felt like she was also angry at these women because she didn't really... See, I didn't get that. They just... I thought I, they I started off being victims and became quite powerful, but they weren't necessarily nice. And that I thought was quite clever. I find it fascinating when you hear about women who've been through awful things, but they're not particularly nice. They're not instantly yeah, like, yeah, you it's, can't it's, instantly it's, empathise. And that's what that whole book is made up of. And what about the psychotic nurse? She's amazing. No. I just... I just... I love that. There's not even a conversation. I genuinely don't think that in that situation that's how people would react, regardless of their gender. I don't I don't think and I think if that's how we think people will react, then we must believe that there's just no humanity in anyone. But I think they've been pushed past that. But I think if you were in the situation they were in, you would start to I don't want to spoil anything, but I don't think you'd do what they did. I think some people would. Well, I... well. I disagree. People should read it, so then, or if people have read it, they should the black put eye. comments down below that don't spoil it for other people. Team Simon or Team Mercedes? Obviously, I'm going to win. It's my <laughs> Right, okay. Here's another one I haven't read. I love that book so much. So, I, when this came out, I was I like... I can't remember the name of the character, though. Frankie. Frankie, okay. When this came out, I thought, this sounds like the sort of book I would absolutely love. You would, I think. And then, for whatever reason, you know, when you think there's a book you love, you sort of let it sit there for a bit. Yeah. I did that. And then And then suddenly I, two years have gone by. Yeah. And then what happened is, is I sort of felt like it was going to be quite a depressing read. And I was concerned that too much of my life was going to connect to her life. Right, okay. And I would read it and just feel really low about it, basically. So I put it off for a really long time. And only recently have I felt like I'm in the headspace where I could read this and feel okay about yeah. it. But basically, I want to talk about this because I couldn't remember how much you loved it. So I, I wanted to really know. loved and it. And also, I want you to convince me why I should read it very soon. So, the reason I think you'd like it... So, the, the one thing that was putting me off it a little bit was it, it was a, a bit millennial, which okay. I don't like. It's one thing that's really put me off Sally Rooney. And okay. it's still putting me off I've Sally Rooney. I've not read Rooney. any of her books yet. But I keep the, hearing millennial. Yeah, 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 it. And yeah, as soon yeah. as I hear that word with anything, I'm like, do one, I'm not interested. But this is about a woman who she's had a really, really tough time in the city. You don't know quite what's happened, but she's ended up having to go home and she ends up living in her grandmother's house who's recently died. And she sort of is trying to reconnect with life and find yeah. her place in life, which I love as a... We're always trying to work out where we connect with life. And I yeah. think this is where this book had such a chiming moment with me because I was like, okay, I get it. 
Now, the bit that put me off a little bit is it talks quite a lot about art, and I don't like art yeah. in books, but Same. I liked this okay. because it's not pretentious. Yeah. But what she starts to do is she starts to find dead animals and photograph them and, and then talk about them. The they're in the book, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's really about... I, I don't want to give it too much away, but it's really about somebody coming to terms with loneliness, coming to terms with not fitting in, mm. coming to terms with who they are, but also coming to terms with the fact that you never really know who you are. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. And it's got the nature in it. It's got interesting family dynamics. She's a bit of a quirky, weird character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you'd like it. Is that yeah. not convinced you, has it? No, it has. And you know what I thought was also really good was when they sent this out, they wrapped it in a piece of paper that was the yeah. photo a line made by walking, which I'd never heard of. Um, and and that doesn't, you don't need to, have, it makes sense in context of the book a little bit. But it's not, if you've not seen it, it doesn't matter that you've no, not seen it's it. Really and I really cool, like that. It's, I thought, actually, because a lot of like modern art, I'm like, oh, whatever. But I actually thought that was a pretty cool concept. It's, yeah. it's just the line in a field that's been made by the photographer. He walk, he's walked up and down until he's worn a line in the grass and then he's photoed it. Photo- photoed it? Photoed it, painted it. No, it is a photo, isn't I was, it? I thought it was a painting. No, I think it's a photo. Oh. Photographed we could it, this not photoed hours. it, is it? Photoed. Um, photoed it. And I haven't read her first one either, have you? No, I haven't, and I do want to, but I think that's about... It's not about just a man who walks it's his dog. It's a man dog. and a dog, isn't it? Yeah. Which is why I never wanted to read it, but... But now that I've loved that so much, I want to go back. Yeah. And also, I was so prepared to not really like it, mm. and then when I read it, I just fell in love with it. And I listened to her on a podcast, I can't remember which one, and she seemed so nice, and just genuine. It doesn't but matter, but it does matter. Yeah, yeah, it, made, it really made me want to read it more, and I still haven't. The last Finally. one I've, I've read... Crimson Petal oh, and the Crimson White. Petal. I was expecting Rebecca to pop up at some point. No, I thought I'd stick it. It's a bit it. obvious, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, We have yeah. talked about that previously yeah. on a podcast, which I'll try and link down below. Yeah. Or I might not. <laughs> Crimson Petal and the White. Did you like it or not? Um, I felt mm, about it. I loved it and I read it at a very weird time. I read this uh, the few days leading up to the day of, the night of, and then the few days after my first wedding. Really? So it's really got quite a lot of memories yeah, around yeah, that, which, considering I'm divorced, <laughs> could be quite awkward. Thanks yeah, for yeah, bringing this sorry. up, the Zodis. I loved it because I loved the narration and how you 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 fly through. And I thought actually that was something that Imogen Hermes Gower tried to do a little bit with uh, Mrs Hancock. Yeah, yeah. And no, the I Mermaid and Mrs Hancock. Mrs <laughs> Hancock and Mr Hancock, the book <laughs> that nobody's written. It's only because we had rude name for it yeah, when we, we were did. doing it as a buddy read um, or Lauren did let's blame Lauren she's not here Lauren dirty I love how vivid his characters are it is a bit long it's way too long well it's interesting because I like that on a different level like, so we've been talking about this bit on and off I'm realising I really like books and I can't find the right term for it where they're not pretentious they're so beautifully crafted, but it's about the character and the plot and the atmosphere but it's not simple, it's beautifully written, but simple, not pompous, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. not um, pretentious or anything. And this book can occasionally waver into that and be a bit tropey. But the other thing that I really love about it, well, oh, I don't love that about it, but you know what I mean, but it doesn't go too far. Mm. I love the gritty realism of it. Yeah, yeah, and I did like that. And initially, when I started reading it, I was like, this is going to be really good. I just felt so two issues I had with it and a lot of what this book is known for is that when it starts you have this narrator yeah. who's talking to you and like everyone was like oh so amazing but actually it just gets dropped and then it gets sort of picked up in the last like chapter and you're like oh hello you're here again but it sort of feels like the author realised it was going to be too much hard work to do it throughout so he gave up but then don't make it such a big thing at the start that you feel yeah. like that's going to be what the whole novel's like because it was quite interesting because he'd be like oh I won't mention this now but this will be important later like he'd say things like that to you and then it just completely stopped yeah but I didn't weirdly I didn't notice that yeah. like in hindsight I remember yeah, it, that yeah. dropping but it, did, yeah. it didn't become a lasting thing I think it's just Sugar's story is so bold and so she's such a brilliant character yeah. and just the way I think for me it's everything that I want a Dickin, Dickens novel to be that never is I think the only thing that I would like a little bit more with Crimson Petal and the White probably is I don't think it necessarily has a sense of humour that's what it is that I love about Sarah Waters and, and other authors that I really love mm. there's a sense of humour in there as well yeah there's a sense of fun and yeah, well, yeah, warmth but also, but also it can be dark what I really like is when authors can use like dark comedy yeah. so that you laugh and then you feel a bit guilty for laughing yeah, and then you feel, yeah. um, but this book I think occasionally took itself a little bit seriously I just felt that it was dry at points. Maybe that's what I mean, but like, I don't. No, dry. I think dry is a bit harsh. The, She's merciless. The, the so there's sort of the sugar, who's the the female prostitute, yeah. and then there's the man who's sort of paying her, yeah. 
and then there's loads of stuff about his brother. It was completely unnecessary. And it got re there'd be long old chapters about his brother, and I'd be like flipping through it, like who cares? Like no one. Don't want that story. That was a bit like the Mars room with Doc. We've just read the yeah, Mars room together yeah. recently. What was that? And unnecessary. There was like a whole character that's in there that has a really vile, horrible storyline. Yeah. Doesn't need to be in there. Such a tenuous link to yeah. the whole rest of the novel. It's I just went silly. off on a tenuous tangent there, sorry. <laughs> I know, I agree. <laughs> I love like big, chunky historical fiction books. I love books that are really character focused and really slow. So I have no issues with a massive book. But I felt like so many of these pages were just unnecessary. Like, what, when you think about the plot of this book, I what thought happens? he was trying to pay homage to Dickens because that's how I feel about every I don't Dickens, like Dickens book. Maybe, no, I don't like Dickens, then. but I like this more than I like Dickens. If you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, agree. Um, and also, I think it was I was still in my early getting back into reading, and mm. I think this felt like a real accomplishment for me. Oh yeah, which yeah. isn't why you should love a memory of a book, but I think yeah. that's one of the reasons I kept it because it was. But also, I love his other writing. See, in I general. don't. I've also... Have you read the one about um, the girl who drives at night? I can't remember what it's called. No, I've. Um... I've seen the film. Yeah. I won't read any more of his books because I got halfway through Book of Strangely Things and I thought it was bloody awful. So I'm I'm done with him as an author. This wasn't this was fine, but I don't want an eight hundred page book to be fine. Okay, she's not going back to him. I'm just not convinced by him as an author. I am. I think he's I think he's a good author. Mm. Oh, so well. that's that one. End it on a down there. There we go. So. It wasn't it wasn't bad, but I just feel like it. Interestingly, I've kept it. I, w I won't ever reread it, I don't think. But I've kept it. I think I've also kept it because of when I read it. Yeah, it's nice to keep a book for a memory, isn't it? Oh, well, well, no, not no. that memory. Well, no, it is because now I've, I've got to the point where because I've got married again and I've yeah, passed it, yeah, I just remember it, it's a really lovely day. Yeah, a really that's true. Time. So I think that's one of the reasons I've kept it. But it is weird how you can have certain books that remind you of certain periods in mm. your life. Yeah, and he seems like a really nice guy. I just don't think his writing's for me. But then that's the thing like, I've said to you. Like, I, I, one author that I just can't get is David Mitchell. I've tried so hard. And you really, really yeah, love him. Yeah, yeah, I really love him. And but like, I find him pretentious, difficult, but he's dry. he's so lovely. Sometimes you feel bad when you don't like an author's yeah. books when you think, God, they, they, they seem really nice, but it just doesn't, it doesn't change anything, does it? doesn't it? change like, anything, so it is. So. So I'm glad we finished on this book. Thanks a lot. You should have brought Rebecca instead. So. <laughs> That's that. Thanks, Mercedes. Well, I'm really like slouching out. Yeah, she's. Is this is this sofa though? Yeah, it's quite it's slouching. Quite a slouching it sofa. Is. Sorry, I have really um, good posture. Go and check out Mercedes' channel if you haven't. You already probably have. And um, I will speak to you very soon. Oh, I'll also link down below all of the previous ones that I've done of these videos with both the Laurens. I've had my friend Polly on it. I've had Ollie Bliss. I've had them all. Anyway, on that note, I'll speak to you all soon. Bye. Bye.